great. I'm here with uh, Tahir Bashir and uh, we continue our series of segments uh, on artists and brands and today we're going to look at uh, uh, acts as brands. So first of all, uh, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. And uh, I want to talk about uh, the choice of names. So that's uh, something that's becoming increasingly difficult for bands to find an original name, but it's also very, very important. So, uh, you know, what are your tips on that front when a band is starting out and trying to choose uh, or focus on a name or even as a solo artist uh, trying to focus on a name? What are the best steps to take? Well, I mean, obviously, creatively, they need to come up with that. But uh, a short, snappy name, uh, you know, ultimately, if they're thinking about their brand from day one, that's a good thing because because that gives them longevity later on. From a legal perspective, you know, do some really simple, practical things. Do Google searches around the name. See if it's associated with other bands. See if it's associated with other things yeah. which you might not want to be associated with. Um, see if domain names are available around that brand see right. if social media tags are available around that brand if from day one you can get these things in order then that builds the the, the foundation for for later on exactly and it's important to also have a do you think it's important to have a googleable name I, I talked to a, a label the other day that had an artist that had a, a purposefully ungoogleable name because they thought it was uh, cooler for people to try and uh, get you know make it harder for people to find that artist that do you think that can work <laughs> Uh, this concept of discovery is yeah. always something that uh, you know it can be a kind of double-edged sword. If someone is too exposed, then they become you know less interesting for a certain uh, type of audience. Other people want to find things, and I guess this is part of that process. You know, do you want someone to be discovered, or do you want to be able to push them forward? Ultimately, I think um, you know. I don't understand how someone can make something ungoogleable. <laughs> I don't understand how, how does that happen. If they're good, they will be googleable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know a band called Me, and that's pretty ungoogleable. <laughs> and talking about uh, you know when a band goes one step further and they start to get known, uh, when does when when do they have to start thinking about their name as a brand name, and when does it come in handy to, for example, apply for trademark protection around that name? Yeah, um, I think as soon as there's some commercial activity around the brand, then trademark should be thought about. Uh, increasingly, uh, I mean, mo most of our acts have got trademarks associated with them. And the reason for that is because um, it increases the licensing value of that brand. So if, you, if the brand is doing something with respect to merchandise, uh, uh, if they're doing something with respect to a particular type of joint venture, yeah. then being able to license a registered mark gives you the ability to ask for more money because ultimately you're saying, this is a clear market, we're giving you a certificate that actually, if there are bootlegs, etc., you can go after that. So from the merchandiser's perspective, they know that this is a cleaner product that they can monetize better. Yeah. So I, I think it's important for, 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 brand, for bands and artists to think about registering trademarks. Having said that, they need to concentrate and make sure they've got enough money to create the product to the best <laughs> level first. Yeah, sure, of course. And does that apply to US and UK, or do you have to apply to different trademarks if you want to operate in both territories? Yeah, unfortunately, trademarks are split up in lots of different things. So they're split yeah. up by territory, they're split up by the class of goods you register it for. Right. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, each territory has a different trademark registration attached to it. Right. Also, for band has got a name and they've got a logo, those have separate trademark reg registrable activities. However, if you've got, you know, I mean, we, we devise cost-effective strategies which you, where you can cash flow these registrations. General tip, go for your main commercial markets first yeah. uh, and then, you know, build in uh, other trademarks later. You generally, across different territories, you have a, a six-month window. So if you register, say, for example, in the U.S., then you can backdate your registration in other territories as long as you do it within six months. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Until the next segment. Thanks a lot.